Welcome. This video will present to you some of the features of our Internet Programmable Relay. The device must be connected to your network, your computer and a power supply before you start using it. Connection with your computer via an USB cable is needed only for certain operations and does not have to be maintained at all times. On the left side of the window of the software is the list of devices. There you can add or delete devices. To add a device, click the right mouse button on the list and choose the Add a new device option. A small device configuration window will pop out. After entering the correct parameters and if the device is set up properly, you should be able to achieve connection with the device. On top there are three tabs. Switch to the first tab, USB console. In this tab you carry out three important operations. First, you set up the device. Pick the Safe Configuration radio button. This is the field where you enter the password you want to use. It must be at least 15 characters long. Generally, the longer the better. The device is protected using the AES256 encryption algorithm. The password simply cannot be broken. The only way someone can obtain your password is from you. There is absolutely no chance that the password can be stolen from the device. When you double click the field when you enter the password, an on screen keyboard will pop out. This happens also when you double click on any other fields where you enter text. Under the password, you enter the device's IP address, mask address, gateway address, etc. Remember, if you use two or more devices, they must have different IP and MAC addresses. Otherwise, there will be a conflict between the devices. What addresses you enter depends on your network configuration. The NTP server IP is the address of a time server you want the device to synchronize time with. It can be one of the computers in your network or any random time server on the internet. Next to the red text is the field where you enter the PIN code. This code needs to be entered for operations that need the device to be connected with a computer using a USB cable. You receive the pin code together with the device. Now, press the firmware update button. Only the functions necessary to carry out this operation will stay highlighted. To update the firmware, you need to enter the pin code first, then press open firmware and pick the update file. Next, press Write Firmware and wait for the status bar to reach 100%. This is a very basic description of this operation. Read a step by step the detailed description in the manual before you try to update the firmware. The last operation done in this step is time syn synchronization. It is also <coughs> described in detail in the manual. Time synchronization is important because if your computer and the device have times which differ more than 15 seconds, communication between them will not be possible. Switch the tab to Settings. Here you can for instance change the language or firewall settings. You can also save the current configuration or restore a previous one from a file. Now switch to the Device A tab. The layout of the window resembles the front of the device. On the bottom there is a field where you en must enter the password to the device. Press Enter or click ac the Accept button to confirm the password. The password you enter here is the password you set earlier, not the device's PIN code. Both are the INP 1 to 6 input buttons. These buttons allow you to control the status of the inputs using the software. On the left of these buttons is the Astro Timer button. When you press it, the Astro Timer configuration window pops out.
On the right there are lights that show the status of the connected battery. They are green if, the, if a battery is connected, grey when it is not. A battery should be connected to the device in case of a power outage. Above the input buttons are lights showing the status of the X variables. If a light is violet, the variable is active. If the light is grey, the variable is completely deactivated. Double-clicking one of the X's opens the infant configuration window. Your cursor will change from an arrow to a hand when you find the place you should click on. In the center of the screen on the left there are the main configuration and web server buttons. Clicking them opens configuration windows for these options. In the middle there is a screen showing a set of parameters. What parameters are shown depends on which radio button is selected. There are four buttons, therefore four sets of parameters can be shown. On the right there is the box where you enter the 147 pin code. Many options in the main window become active only after you enter this code. Press the small reset button next to the box if you want to deactivate the code. In the top of the window there are the relay buttons. They are green if the relay is active, red if time is counting down before they switch off, and grey when they are off. Below them are lights showing the status of Y and Z variables. The lights are red when the variables are active and grey when the, they are deactivated. Double clicking on the one of the Y or Z's opens the output configuration window. Your cursor will change from an arrow to a hand when you f find the place you should click on. That is all for now. Thank you for watching.